Hello, and welcome to the Physique Development Podcast. Alex and I today will be going over health and a little bit of what it means to us, as well as some different metrics that have been really helpful for our clients when it comes to what is health or what is being healthy and navigating what that means for you, because it is going to be very individual for each person. But before that, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about our weekend um, and just kind of the state of where we're at within life honestly goes in line within some different aspects we'll talk about on this podcast of uh, how we look out for our health as well. So um, we're actually a few weeks ahead. So when you're listening to this, it is actually like the week of Christmas for us and this time. But for you guys, it's going into the second week of January. Um, so this might seem a little odd, but Packers pulled out a win. <laughs> and we're we're really, really happy for that. We got the win with the Bears, had a bye week, came back, had a great, great game, great win um, on Monday against the Rams. So really happy with that. Yeah. So this is Tuesday and we are uh, a little, we had to stay up late for yes. the game, obviously. So Duh. we are, are normally asleep by uh, 10. <clears throat> we didn't go to bed until midnight last night because of the game, but that's just the sacrifice that needs to be made as a fan. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to put yourself in a situation where you're saying us, <laughs> and this is my team, uh -huh. you better stay up for a Monday night game. You better oh, yeah. stay up for that Sunday night game mm -hmm. and Thursday. If mm -hmm. we got a Thursday night game, we're staying up. And so, you know, it's just a sacrifice we had to make. But so outside stay of up that, for even the press conferences after <laughs> we're keeping up all throughout the week. I mean, I feel pretty confident saying we uh, because of the time we put in as fans. Well, I mean, and we're invested. I mean, yes, very. The, the Packers are a publicly owned business or yeah, team. Team. And we, we're part owners. We have two shares. Yeah. Of a you know, um, a, there, there the might, shares that have no value to them. You know what? We I don't need to tell them, them how many shares there are. <laughs> we can just tell them we have shares yeah. and we are part owners. Yes. Uh, so we have that. And then um, over this weekend, we're both fending off a little bit of a, a cold, mm -hmm. a stomach bug. Um, and so we both kind of just laid low over the weekend trying to get as healthy as possible. But uh, heading into a week where we are taking off uh, from check-ins and that's going to obviously obviously offboard a lot of our work for the week as a whole. Mm -hmm. And so it'll be nice to have a little bit of recovery, recharge time. Uh, I'm really looking forward to just being able to wake up and read for a couple of hours mm -hmm. and it not be, you know, uh, a Putting problem. Putting everything behind. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to just having that time and just getting to have some slower mornings and relaxing a little bit. Yeah. And I wanted to talk on that of us taking some time off. So like Alex mentioned, we're both recovering from a little bit of a cold. And if you remember, we both got a really bad flu bug um, back in October. And so recovering from that, we had some stuff come up within family as well as some different life stressors, different aspects within business, and just recovering from being sick. We had travel. It was a lot going on and a lot of stress. And I felt that I wasn't able to ever get back into a routine of training because of this. And I was telling Alex that I was really proud of myself because even though I was mentally struggling from being away from training or regularly training, Training and being consistent. I know that in each circumstance and situation, I really did make the best decision of when I needed to pull back or when I needed to like buck up and be like, put on your big girl pants and let's go train. And I feel like we both have been doing a really good job of knowing when we have surpassed the amount of stress that we can handle and when training is going to be beneficial for us or when we do need to go ahead and take that rest, even if we don't always want to. Uh, and even coming into this week, I wasn't even thinking about it being Christmas and like taking time off. I was just, you know, put one foot in front of the other. We have this work to get done. Uh, and Alex was like, we should really take one of these weeks off. And so we kind of just got all of our stuff together, got in contact with our clients, let them know what the situation was. And that's a way that we showed up for our health. And that's what we're going to be talking about in this episode of when we look at health and the World Health Organization, how they define health is it's going to be 
be a state of physical, mental, and social well-being and not just the absence of disease. So it's not just not being sick. It's really focusing on that physical, that mental, and that social aspect that's going to allow you to be the healthiest. And I find that I've been really leaning into what my health means to me more and more recently, not only within having disease and kind of missing out on my health, but also within the aspect of like the way that I talk to clients and what I want them to realize about themselves. I don't want to be a major hypocrite saying to take care of themselves when I'm running myself into the ground time and time again. And so being able to really take that perspective and look back on how do I need to show up for myself socially, physically, mentally to be able to have the best quality of life and health is really important to me and a huge focus that we're both leaning into, honestly, right now. Yeah, I think that within the the health aspect, we're taking a much more full picture approach. And that has been a progression over the past, I would say probably three years where it wasn't just looking at the physical health and, um, and are we seeing numbers in the gym improve? Are we seeing that we're hitting our macros? Are we getting to the gym every single day? Um, and, and that being a very short sighted viewpoint on health and that uh, only focusing on those things was a detriment to our mental health and, and those different aspects unknowingly to us because the self-awareness wasn't there to really understand it. And so now being in the position that we're in where we are looking at it from a mental, uh, spiritual health, all the different aspects that will go into, um, it has been a much more fulfilling process. It's a uh, much better understanding of when I am in a low place that I can identify where it's stemming from. I have a much better understanding of the pieces that uplift me and the things that I know I can get back into alignment to get myself out of a rut faster. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to have a much more global or full picture approach to our health has been a, a massive benefit. Yeah. And I've heard it defined of just being like that biopsychosocial. So bio meaning like your biomechanic. How is your body moving? Physical. Are you moving your body? And realizing that movement is such an important part of health. And again, that's something that we really talk to our clients about outside of just training in the gym because training and doing physical activity and resistance training is extremely beneficial. We have a whole myth-busting series talking about why weight training can be so beneficial for you, but there's also benefit to just moving your body in general. And so touching base with clients of how are you moving throughout the day? Because like Alex said, if we look at that big picture, if you're just checking off your gym sessions, but then you don't move the rest of the day at all and you don't take care of your body, then are you really that healthy and taking care of your health as a whole? And then looking at that psycho side, that mental side and mental clarity, which is one that I feel like people kind of compress and don't think about as much if they are checking those other boxes, but how important it is to really think about how stressed you are and realizing that your mental space and your, your state of your mental headspace is going to determine your reality every single day. And so being able to be aware of what that mentality is leading to within your reality is going to be extremely needed to be able to have those touch points with yourself. And then looking at that social side and realizing that like, social circles and the ability to feel connection from other people is so unbelievably important within our day-to-day -day lives and how, again, our health is focused on. And so just taking a example of the, any of those three, being able to see that coming into this week, like I personally was really struggling. I was uh, even kind of not responsible responding to text messages from friends that I normally would have because I felt so overwhelmingly stressed and in a place where I wasn't able to take care of myself because of everything that was on my plate. And I'm going to be someone that unless Alex said to take time off, I was likely not going to take time off. And that would have been extremely detrimental to my overall health and my overall success moving forward because I had gone past that limit of stressing myself and my body and these other aspects 
aspects. And so being able to kind of have that permission from Alex and that push to take the time off and focus on some different aspects. So yesterday, um, we did a lot within getting everything wrapped up within our clients so we could take the rest of the week off. And I prioritized. I got to train yesterday, and it felt great. I also got to go and meet up with a client in person, and it was great for that community aspect, that social aspect. And even this week, I have planned of like a few different FaceTime catch-ups with friends. Um, I also, because it's the holidays, some friends are in town to see their families, and I'll be able to see some of them as well. And then I have a few other activities that I'm really excited to be able to do. And I already feel like such a renewed sense, like without even the whole week taking place, it's day two, it's Tuesday, um, just because I was able, well, Alex was able to show up for me and my health um, and being able to do some of those different aspects that it's like, these are going to push the needle forward. This is going to help me feel the healthiest so that I can continue to progress towards the goals that I have. Yeah, I think that the aspect of just the grind day in and day out is a often worn as a badge of honor. And I think that people try and hold themselves to the standard of, of just constant work uh, and not paying attention to the the quality of their work or how they're approaching the work and um, find themselves in a situation as their uh, quality of work begins to deteriorate. They try to push through and think that just pushing through is going to you know, re-elevate their work quality. Mm -hmm. And and oftentimes that's not the case. Sometimes it, it, it does. Like sometimes you just got to trudge through the mud and, and you're going to be able to have that upswing. But more often than not, it's going to be a matter of taking a step back and allowing for yourself to recharge the batteries because, um, you know, bandwidth wise, we only have so much and you only have so much mental focus that can be applied. And, and when you're pouring from an empty cup or you're, you know, having so many inputs that are out of your control that are are dictating how your mind is is responding to things. It's just not an environment to where you're able to best work anyway. And so it, it's a time that you have to be able to step back and, and have that time off uh, to recharge the batteries and then fill the cups up that haven't you know, been filled. And, and for you in particular, it's going to be a personal connection. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, um, you know, aspects to where you're stepping away from your desk and doing work that's not you know, there, mm -hmm. um, because of how glued you've been to, um, what we've had, you know, on our plate. And I think that we'll be able to speak on that in time. Mm -hmm. Uh, now is, is not the moment, but, um, in time we'll be able to speak more in depth on that. And I think, um, you know, as we look at just time away, it, it is something that, uh, I, th I think for myself that I ran away from, for a couple of different reasons is that uh, I always heard the quote of, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Mm -hmm. And I felt as though that that quote only meant that you were just constantly working and that was the only way to get better. And when I realized that the recharge time was actually making me better as a different pursuit of getting better, um, then once that clicked for me, I was able to see that. And that was a, a big change for me because that quote constantly was in my head. And that goes back to, to, I don't, it's not last episode, but it was one of the last ones mm -hmm. we recorded of like talking through of the, don't be a bitch and, and give yourself grace. And that kind of comes back to that. And so, um, yeah, I think that it's, it's huge from a, a mental standpoint, but also being able to evaluate why you need that time off and, uh, filling those cups up of what needs the nurturing is, is really important because you can find yourself in a situation. I think that vacations or time off that we took early on together. Um, I was unaware. I didn't have the self-awareness to know what cups were not being nurtured. And so we'd go and take these breaks and I would just be anxious the whole time mm -hmm. of the work that I was missing or that I was putting off or what have you. And so I, I wouldn't allow for myself to relax or, or be present. And it, it took away from our time for sure. Um, and then didn't do anything positive for me. So it just reaffirmed that I didn't need the time away. And now that I'm in a position where I can sit back and, and understand where I'm missing the mark on some things. And, and in this week, I'm going to be able to fill those cups up and, and get myself back to a, a good baseline. Um, 
it, it's such a powerful thing to be able to have that self-awareness and just asking yourself those questions of where is the stress and anxiety stemming from? Where's the uncertainty stemming from? And how can I work through those things is, is huge. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Yeah. What do you feel like for you was the thing that really pushed you over the edge to start paying attention to those? Because we've had conversations of you've definitely made a change of being able to recognize where you need to pour into or just that working 24-7 isn't always the answer. So what do you feel like really pushed that for you in your life? Um, you know, pushing myself to a point where I thought I was, <laughs> um, this is tough, uh, pushing myself way past the boundary, um, being extremely strung out on, on stimulants with, uh, way too much caffeine, um, Adderall and all the things that were just constantly being input to allow for myself to work well past any boundary that would have been necessary. Um, and I think that I had to push myself to that dark place to be able to pull myself out of getting into therapy and, and doing the right things on that front, having more conversations with you. Um, and I, you know, I, I would say controlling the things that I was allowing to put input into my mind as well. Um, the, the things that I was, I was consuming or, or how I was consuming content and those things by, by having better control within that. I think that that, um, helped tremendously. Yeah, I think you stopped being as much on autopilot and just thinking like this is the only way to do control. something. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. Of realizing that you have other aspects in your life. And it was a lot of honestly just giving a new habit or a new process a shot. And I feel like that's really difficult for a lot of people, understandably so. I mean, forming habits is difficult and it takes time and you can't form a million habits at once. But you started to really take a few habits and start to really build on them. And then you realized, oh, crap, my quality of life is so much better when these habits are in place or when I'm taking care of these different aspects of my life. And I feel like that kind of snowballed to you getting to, to where you are today. Yeah. I, I, well, I think that even to, to expand more on my answer, it was a realization that the path that I was going down was going to crash and burn much quicker than I would have liked for it to. Mm -hmm. I, I love my job. I love what we're building. And I realized that the path that I was taking was not in alignment with what I wanted to build um, around me within my own life, within our business and, and those different factors. And so that realization and then trying to reverse engineer it and finding um, some ways to better work and to better approach my day and, a, and having a better understanding of what makes me feel my best and prioritizing those things and realizing that just like not gluing myself to my desk as you know, I, I have a specific task and I have to get it done. I just have to sit here until I get it done. It's one of those things that I feel uh, for myself that from a young age and, and many listeners can, can resonate with this is you were just forced to sit there to finish your homework until you could go play with your friends. Like you had to sit and you just had to stare at it until it was done. And I think that that uh, follows a lot of us into adulthood and we, we force ourselves to be in this scenario. And I know that when I'm in a, a little bit of a rut, I fall right back into it. I just sit there and I'm like, oh, I have to get this done. I have to get this done. And the reality is, is that the more that I am assessing my hourly work and those different aspects and, and rating the quality of my work. And, and I have that eight out of 10 threshold that I have to meet. And if I don't meet that, then I need to get up and go do something else. Mm -hmm. Um, when I stop paying attention to that is when I'm starting to fade a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so like I, I've, I've been in a bad rut the last, I don't know, like week ish. Mm -hmm. And uh, today is really the first day where I have gotten back to my, my day. Like I'm, I'm getting back to my routines and those different factors. And it's literally just a, a simple shift in my decisions. 
like regaining that discipline is, is simply just coming down to making the choice of coming back to it. Um, and, and I think that that's the, the most powerful thing is, is having that conversation with yourself and those, the voices that are, are dictating the poor decisions that you're making like every day. And every time that you're giving into them, that voice is just getting stronger and stronger and it's getting easier and easier just to fall into the poor decision. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the first decision back to your disciplinary act is a very hard one. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to make that first step. You have to really force yourself to make those first steps. But then once you're moving back in the right direction, that momentum really carries you to a place where it gets back to being a routine of disciplinary action, as well as the, the voices have, have, the volume to those have shallowed tremendously after just having those intentions for half a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's really powerful. And, and for those who are struggling listening, just know that it's it's just a matter of flipping that switch. That first flip is going to be tough, but once it's once it's running, that light is going to burn very strong if you just keep going. Yeah, I think it just talks to again, like your mental state does determine your reality every single day, and being able to have that that takes a big mental switch, not just again, okay, I'm doing the act. It takes you telling yourself, I'm going to do this. This is what I'm showing up for, or having that honest conversation once you've reflected on your day or your week, and realizing I'm not doing the things that need to get done for me to feel the way I need to feel, and I. Feel like for both of us, it was confronting a lot of truths of what we thought either it was to reach success or what truths we had told ourselves of how a day had to go. And it was a lot of confronting those truths we had held on to so much and realizing like we need to get out of our own way and just really look at the situation for what it is instead of whatever we're telling ourselves internally. Right. I, I think that the I think that, that can all be kind of summed up into you're in control more than what you think you are. Mm -hmm. You're much more in control of your day than uh, what your mind is allowing for you to believe. And some of the things, characteristics that your mind is is feeding you that you are and the, and the way that you are and the way that you think um, are, are just, it's just that, they're thoughts. And, and you are the driver to the actions that you make. And those, those voices can ramble on as much as they want in your mind, but you're the one moving your hands. You're the one moving your feet and you're the one that can make the right decisions for the best version of you. Yeah. I think a powerful thing for me was realizing the voice that you hear in your head or your initial thought doesn't have to be your action or the thought that stays. And I used to have like random thoughts come up and I would feel bad that a thought came up, but it's what you decide to do with the thought after that. And that was really freeing and powerful because it was these thoughts can come up or you can have these thoughts about yourself if they're negative, whatever it may be, but you get to decide what happens from there. And you get to quiet that voice or allow that voice to amplify and take over your day and your life and believe that to be true. Uh, so that was really great to realize like your thoughts and then how you decide what to do with those thoughts next is really within your own power, which is a really cool and again, freeing feeling to have of you're not just victim to your thoughts. And once they come up, you can't really control them. You can, and you should be able to take that and take the next step forward there. Right. I, yeah. I, I think that uh, it's powerful to have that control. Yeah. How much do you feel that gratefulness has played into just your quality of life or you being able to have a better day-to-day -day process instead of just going throughout the days and not even thinking about what you're grateful for? I think it is very powerful. I, I think that um, expressing the gratitude and, and realizing the things that you may be um, taking for granted is a, a powerful thing to have in place. Like the luxury of, of life of just being able to have the bare essentials of a, a warm home, a roof over your head, uh, like food, water, all those things. And, and it's very easy to get caught up in, ex especially being in a, in a, a goal driven state to get very caught up in the things that you don't have or the things that you wish that you had, or, or feel as though that you've put the time in to attain and you haven't attained yet. It's very easy to fall into 
woe is me type mentality when that's the case and um, lose sight of all the, the beautiful things that are in your life and the things that you have gratitude towards as well as by expressing greater gratitude, um, you're able to strengthen the relationships around you because you realize the uh, the quality of, of individuals um, that are around you and you're able to vocalize that better to them. Uh, this has been a year where we have cut out um, and removed individuals who were not you know, positive beings in our life. And that's been hard because some of those individuals in our life have been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been a, a really hard year on, on that front of things. Um, and I think that in that we are, are in a place where I'm immensely grateful that I've had you in that process because I know that a lot of those hard conversations wouldn't have been able to been had without you by my side. It's one of those things that um, by myself, I, I don't know that I have the strength to navigate through a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And so um, by, by expressing gratitude and, and um, acknowledging how like the things that are being input coming back to that and that's the the environment and those that are around you um, is super duper important. Yeah. How do you feel like you practice gratitude? Like I know that when someone hears that, they might think, oh, I need to just write out a gratefulness list every day. And that's the only way that I can truly practice gratitude. But how would you say that you practice gratitude in your daily life, um, just in different scenarios? I am a person who likes to express my gratitude by action. And so within, well, by saying that, what I mean is that I show my gratitude by like my word and and how I am upholding the things that I, I tell someone. If I if I tell someone that I'm very grateful for that I'm going to do something, I'm I'm going to to do it or I'm going to to follow through with it. Um, I, I think that being vocal through action is the um, way that I show my love and my gratitude the best. Um, I think that I am navigating into a place where I am verbally doing a better job of expressing it. But I don't think that, um, like growing up, the way that everyone showed gratitude towards me and to everyone in my family was through action. Mm -hmm. There's very little words being exchanged. <laughs> exchanged. <laughs> it was it was very much so like I did this and like this is how this is me showing I love you type situation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that I have held on to that, but you have shown me that. Um, it is equally valuable, if not more valuable, to tell people uh, when you when you have that gratitude you know, towards them. Yeah, I think there's power in both, and I think that once you understand that someone is trying to show you they love you or they're grateful for you through actions is eye-opening and then you can accept that. But I think that starting off, I didn't realize that that's right. how you were telling me you loved me um, or showing me gratitude because I wasn't hearing the words and I was used to hearing the words. But once you were like, this is me showing you, then I was like, oh, well then thanks. Like I, I love this and I could then read those situations so much better. Um, but for myself, when it comes to gratefulness, I did start doing a gratefulness list and that really helped me like get over the hump. And sometimes within habits, and one thing that I think is really great to be able to realize is that the way that you start the habit or get into it doesn't mean it has to stay that exact way all the time. And I needed to do like a daily gratefulness list. And I didn't, it didn't really work. I tried pen and paper. It wasn't working. I tried a few other things and I have a whiteboard and it really helped to do it on the whiteboard because I like using the whiteboard. And it was something that I could like just erase and be able to get back to the next day and write everything down. And that was the way I started with getting like more regular gratefulness in my life. And now I don't keep up with the gratefulness list anymore, but I'll express it in a few different ways. So like I talked about training yesterday and the day before, it felt really good. And at the bottom of my paper of my training log, I wrote like, it feels good to like move my body, like I'm grateful for movement. And it was just something really simple that I just like felt and wanted to write down. And that was the way that I expressed it. But even just you and I, we'll be passing each other in the house and we'll be like, I'm grateful for you, or I'm very thankful that you did that. Or I am like 
just thankful for you in general, even if an action or um, response wasn't prompted for it. And I think that just us vocalizing that and knowing that, okay, that other person is grateful, I'm good to go. Um, And then we've pushed each other in different ways to vocalize to other people or again, show up for other people within our actions to show them like, hey, I I mean it when I say this or I mean it when I feel this. um, And this is how I'm going to continue to show up. Because as we've, we've talked about, we've had a pretty hard year. There's been a lot of growth that's come from it and a lot of positive, bright spots in the year. I'm not saying that this year was like the worst ever. It was just a hard year. And with that, like, I feel like we've turned to gratefulness a lot to realize like, yes, things are hard, but like there's always something to be grateful for. And that's pushed like an air of positivity into days where we've really needed that air. And I also feel like it's just allowed our, again, our mentality, which can determine everything, to be in a much better spot of we could sit around and let all of this drown us. But we are choosing to be grateful for a situation that someone could say, I would never want that to happen to me. And we're choosing to see what is the positive that this is bringing into our life. And I think that's so powerful when it comes to your health, because of course, it's playing into your mentality. And then it can also play into those other buckets that we talked about. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys, as we've talked through this year and and kind of left you on a cliffhanger of what's (laughs) going on, you're probably like, are you guys going to ever just tell us what's happening? in due time. Yeah. It's not really a, a time in which we can talk a whole lot about it at the moment. Um, but in time, I think that we'll feel more comfortable with it and, and be able to, to speak more in detail and give you guys a little get off the cliffhanger and, and have an understanding of what's going on. Yeah. And I think that one other thing, and I'm someone who I always want to share and I want people to like, I probably have struggled with oversharing the most of my past, but it's okay to have things for yourself and to have either memories or moments or experiences that you're not ready to share. And that doesn't mean that you're not vulnerable. It doesn't mean that you're not open or relatable or any of those things. It just means that you're, again, taking inventory of what you need and what's appropriate in that situation and taking the next step. And I think, again, rephrasing what health is is really helpful because that's healthy for both of us is to like have this between us and we be dealing with what all's going on and realizing it's not going to be the most help- helpful for us to share everything that's going on right this moment. And I think that's powerful as well of recognizing that's health, even though in a different circumstance, it might be healthier for you to share and to be open about something. Yeah. And I think that coming back to the you know main topic of the podcast and the uh, focus on health and, and how we define that, I think that from a fitness standpoint and that being a pillar within your health, that does not only have to be resistance training. Mm-hmm. I think that for myself, that was only resistance training for a long time. Yeah. Like I did not put anything else in that bucket that was not lifting weights. Yeah. And I would beat myself up if I was not whether that be like recovering well from training or being able to train, I was like pulled out of my routine and those different factors. I can, I will still say, I I don't like when I'm not able to train as I would, would like to. Like I, I don't enjoy that, Yeah. but I have a better grasp of, of other, other ways I can go about my fitness for that day. Um, because I know that I'm going to have control over my nutrition so I understand that the caloric input that I have in place is is not so abundant that I'm just going to be gaining this copious amount of body fat because I didn't train. And I will also tell you that if you didn't train, you still ate the same amount of food. It's not going to be much of a difference from a caloric standpoint that you're just going to all of a sudden be gaining this mm-hmm. outrageous level of body fat. But I have other ways that I can go about my daily activity within my steps and I can go, uh, you know, go play with the dogs and, and just have activity, yoga, um, going on hikes, not here in in Columbus, (laughs) but if we were in a beautiful place like Colorado or something (laughs) along those lines, um, that you can, that's still a a form of fitness that checks the box. Um, So keep that in mind as you are maybe navigating through an injury or you're navigating through, um, 
you know, a, a, a business trip or, or something along those lines that pulls you out of your routine, pulls you out of the ability to, to get to the gym as, as easily as it may normally be and be able to venture into other modalities so that you are um, still checking that box on a day-to-day -day basis. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled. And I look forward to speaking with you. Yeah. And I wanted to be able to expand on this on what it meant to be healthy for us in different ways. And like I mentioned, with it being the holiday season, one thing I'm really hammering through to clients is to ask themselves two questions. And that's going to be, what do I want? And how do I want to feel? Because when it comes to a lot of the circumstances that you would navigate within a holiday, truly asking what you want out of it is going to be extremely important important instead of just the outside pressures of what other people want. You have to look at what my goals are. What do I want out of this situation? And how am I going to feel? And then how do I want to feel? So I was talking with a client even about alcohol and they were mentioning about drinking over the holidays and they're like, I don't want to feel bloated and gassy and uncomfortable. And I was like, then that has to be a part of your decision making when you're looking at alcohol is how much is my limit for me to not feel bad? Because because you don't want to feel that way. And so when you're looking at your day-to-day -day life, that still holds true, regardless of if it's the holiday season or not, is what do I want and how do I want to feel? And so within our clients, we've seen a lot of habits be such big movers for them and their health, where before I thought healthy was just hitting your macros and getting your training sessions in, where health, again, looks so different for each person, but it's been so incredible to hear clients talk about those little aspects and habits that really just push their health in such a better spot. So recently, clients have been talking about just getting in water before caffeine. Not only do they feel like they don't need as much caffeine, um, but they're in a better spot with their energy throughout the whole entire day, and they're in a better mood as they're going throughout the day, as well as like getting in walks like Alex talked about within steps, and that makes a huge difference. I noticed such a difference and how I feel between like the 6,000 steps versus like 8,000 to 10,000 steps. And it's such a simple thing that I can do. And simple doesn't always mean easy. I still have to put effort towards it. But it is such a simple task that I can do that I know is going to make me feel better. My digestion is going to be better. My energy, my focus is going to be better. There is so much research about the benefits of natural light exposure, getting fresh air, getting sunlight, as well as seeing greenery on a daily basis. And so when we look at the benefits of getting outside, that's going to put us in a place where we improve mood, we improve hormones, we improve vitamin D stores. We also are going to improve our circadian rhythm, our sleep patterns, our mood, our energy, our focus, our productivity, and our psychological like well-being. And so being able to realize like, hey, this is something that moves me forward and puts me in a better spot for my overall health is so important. And of course, sleep is one that I'll mention. I won't go too much into it, but was talking with a friend last night just as far as how much sleep affects you as a human being. And like that's something that we've fallen into. And when we are in those overstressed states is that then we stay up later at night because we're like doing procrastination bedtime revenge. And we're like, we didn't get any time for ourselves today. So we're going to push that and not get enough sleep. And then that pushes us into a place where we have to like be very specific and very intentional about getting back into that routine. And that's just like that flip of switch that you're talking about of we can so easily push ourselves into that situation where we are not getting quality sleep and that snowballs into our week, into all of our days. And then we have to make that such intentional move to flip that switch. And then things are hunky-dory and we're in a solid spot. Um, but even just looking at like um, having quality time and again, that social 
aspect with being able to enjoy time with people, um, as well as like food quality and being able to have alone time or like time that you're able to wind down. And so that's the other aspect I wanted to talk about within food of like what health looks like for you and kind of how you view food now. So how would you say if you were to kind of have some broader strokes, how you used to look at food and what health was versus like what feels healthy to you within food now? So previously, nutrition was something that was just fueling the machine more so. And it was just looked at as a means to an end as, as well as just checking the boxes from a number standpoint to hit the copious amount of food that I've had to eat over the, and I'm not I'm certainly not complaining that I've had an opportunity to eat ridiculous <laughs> levels of food for uh, the greater portion of the, gosh, over the last decade. And so that was really how I viewed nutrition was just a, a a means to an end. And now it is something that is, is really, um, advancing my, like my mind, my, I, I see how it is impacting my mental clarity. I see how it is affecting like my digestion and, and the intricacies of, of how my body functions. And so with that being the case, I'm, I'm in a, a different place now where I'm not trying to put on the most amount of muscle trust. I'm, I'm still trying to mm -hmm. grow out here. I'm, I'm not, you know, trying to, to turn into a, a little vegetable, but, um, <laughs> certainly still trying to grow. But my, my focus is much more around how can I eat to allow for myself to be as, um, productive and efficient throughout my day and how can I feel my best? How can I be in a place where my emotions are are not being affected? I'm not getting tired after a meal. I'm not um, feeling distension. I'm able to, to hop up after a meal and get right back to doing things um, or going on a walk or what have you. And so um, I'm looking at nutrients now as for their value. And, and it's not just a matter of, of hitting particular macros, but what's going to make me feel the best, what's going to make my digestion feel the best, what's going to um, enhance my my day-to-day -day life as a whole, and it not just being about hitting the numbers. Yeah. And that's been so cool to see you evolve into what that means. Because when we first met, like what food meant to you versus how you view it now is so different. Yeah. And it's just been really cool to see you push towards that. And it's been extremely special for myself to go through that experience. Because when I first got into fitness, my whole thing was I just wanted to lose weight. I wanted to not have all the fat that I had on my body, and I just wanted to feel better in my body. And so with that, food was just kind of like whatever it takes to hit the macros, or I'm supposed to eat less food. And I didn't really ever look at food quality and how it was making me feel. And so I like to say that food is so much more than fuel, but it's also fuel. And that's where I was missing the mark is I was just putting food in my body that was not helping me. It was not helping my energy. It wasn't helping my focus. And it wasn't helping me be the person I needed to be because I was causing myself to have more fatigue, distension, being tired after a meal, feeling lethargic, as well as just not prioritizing, again, those nutrients that are going to help you. And now I'm able to really look at it of more of that full picture. And we're able to enjoy great sweet treats or fun like food that we don't have on a normal basis. But whenever we're away from our normal routine of food, we always crave to be back to it because of how it makes us feel. Like it's not even about hitting the macros. Although like, yes, we have goals and we want to hit those. But like whenever we're out of routine or we're not tracking as closely or don't have access to our normal food, we're normally like, I just want to get back so I can feel better. And I think that's so powerful that we've gotten to that point within food that we're able to have that relationship and view it in that way instead of just deciding like this is low calorie so it's healthy or this is a vegetable so it's healthy. It's how does food cause my health to change and how does it impact my health and my quality of life? Right. Yeah. 
So um, with that, just wanted to be able to, to chat on all, all this aspect of health and really talking about it's not just that absence of disease and health is going to look so different for each person, but you do need to take inventory of those three main buckets of that social that mental and that physical health. And at the end of a day or a week, feel free to just take stock, take inventory, do a self audit of, hey, what are one or two things that I can do to move the needle forward? Or how do I need to improve in this aspect? Is it that you really didn't show up for your mental health where this past week I was on my phone way too much yeah. and it was draining me. I could tell how much it was affecting me. And so instead of just letting that drag on, I had to flip the the switch of what needs to be done for me to not be on my phone or how do I need to change the the story or how my day goes for this to not be sucking me dry and being able to take those little things and just apply them step by step is how you're going to continue to improve your health just like I said habits are hard and you want to focus on gradually getting habits in place focusing on one or two of them at a time but realizing like even a lot of the habits that you and I carry that are so good for our health, those took years to truly get to the place that we do all of them on a regular basis. And I'm not going to say every day because sometimes life does get in the way and things aren't done every day, but we also don't hold ourselves to the standard of being perfect. And I think that's great as well of we're looking at, again, the grander picture. And if I can't be perfect today, did I have improvement or did I take a step towards what I needed to be? And really focusing on that consistency consistency standpoint as a whole. So if I miss a walk and I miss getting outside one day, there's no reason for the voices in my head to tear me down of how I suck and I don't care about my health and I'm a POS. There's no reason for that. It's recognizing life was a little crazy today. How can I ensure that I get it done tomorrow because this is important to me? So take some time, reflect on your life, reflect on your health and what your health buckets look like for that um, physical, that mental and that social health. And especially with it being the holiday season and starting into the new year, being able to set those goals for yourself and being able to, again, just keep taking those steps forward. So I'd love to know what health means for you or different things that you do for your health. So feel free to send either of us a DM on Instagram. We'll have those linked either in the show notes or in the description box. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, then feel free to comment and we'd love to interact with you guys and hear about what you do for your health or what health means to you. And we'd also love, depending on whatever platform you're listening to this on, if you could go ahead and either subscribe or give us a review and that's extremely extremely helpful or share this with someone you think would also find this helpful. Um, so thank you guys so much for listening and we will catch you in the next one after another Packers W. <laughs>